Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to my channel, Practical Programming with Dr. Sue. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with WebGPU graphics programming. In the last video, we discussed how to create multiple different objects using the same pipeline and cedar code. That is, we simply combine all of their respective position, color, normal, and UV data together and render them as a single object. However, this approach requires all objects must have the same environment. In this video, we will discuss a more general approach. Here, we want to create multiple objects in a single scene under different environments. Specifically, we want to render a cube with distinct vertex color presented in our video 12 and the sphere with a texture mapping presented in our video 35. In video 12, we created the cube using position, index, and color data, but it does not have lighting and texture mapping. However, in our video 35, we created the sphere using position, normal, and texture data, and it does have the lighting and texture mapping. In addition, both objects use very different CIDR programs. Therefore, we cannot use the same pipeline to create these two objects as we did in the last uh, example. From this video, you will learn a more general approach, that is, using multiple pipelines to render multiple objects in a single scene. This example is based on the projects discussed in our videos 12 and 35. Here, we will use the Git tool to clone the source code used in the video 35. Here is a download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download the source code used in our video 35. Now, let's start a Visual Studio code directly from Windows Start Menu. Visual Studio Code. This is a Visual Studio Code interface. Now, let's start a new terminal window. In this window, we cd into the code folder. cd code. And inside this folder, we make a new folder called GPU52. The new folder was created successfully, now cd into it. We then clone the source code used in the video 35 with the command and git clone webgpu35. After this command, we leave a space and a period. This will place all our source code in the current folder. We can run this command. We can check using direct. Uh, you can see all the source code is indeed in the current folder. Now open this folder from Visual Studio Code. Open folder code GPU 52. Here contains the source code used in the video 35. Now open a new terminal window and run the command npm install to restore the npm packages used in this example. OK, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node modules folder. Next, 
we need to make uh, some changes to the index.html file from drst folder open index.html file. First, we need to change the title from 35 to 52 because this is 52nd video lesson. Here, we also need to change the h1 title here to two lines because here we want to use two pipelines to create our cube and a sphere. In this example, we don't need the camera control and the input parameters, so we can delete the code from here. Motion control, we don't need that and the parameter up to here. So we just remove that part of the code. Now we can save this file. Since in this example, we need to combine two projects presented in the videos 12 and 35. In the SRC folder, we need to rename the Cedar code file from cedar.wgsl to the sphere. This is Cedar for the sphere. So we name it sphere. And also we need to add the seed code for the cube. So we need to add a new cedar file called cube.wgsl. Here we need to add some code to this file. This is the seed code we are going to use to create our cube. Now we can save this file and close it. Next, from SRC folder, open main.ts file. This file now needs to contain the, the code for creating both the sphere and the cube. So we need to replace its content with the new code. Here, we introduce the cedar code for both the sphere and a cube from sphere.wgsl and cube.wgsl files. We then introduce the get texture function from texture data.ts file. This function will be used to create the textured sphere. We then introduce the sphere data and a cube data one from vertex data.ts file. This data will be used to create our 3D objects. Inside the created objects uh, methods, we define the GPU buffers to store the data for our sphere and cube. Here is for our sphere, here is for our cube. Next, we define the render pipeline for our sphere named pipeline one here. The code for this pipeline is the same as that we used in video 35. You can see here we use sphere cedar. Next, we define the pipeline for our cube. We call it as pipeline two. Here we use cube cedar. This pipeline code is the same as that we used in video 12. Next, we create uniform data for these two objects. Here, we use two different translation metrics. One is called translation metrics one and a translation metric two for sphere and cube. Here, for the translation metric one, we use translation vector minus 2.5 minus 1.2 and 0.5. For cube, the translation matrix 2, we use the translation vector 1.5 and minus 2. These two different translation vectors will put this uh, sphere and the cube at a different location in the scene. So we can easily to distinguish these two objects. Next, we create a uniform buffer and a uniform binding group 
for the sphere. You can see here the uniform buffer, the uniform binding group. This uniform binding group contains five elements. First one is the vertex uniform buffer and a fragment uniform buffer, light uniform buffer. This contains the parameters for light model calculation. And also it contains a sampler and a texture which will be used to create a texture mapping for our sphere. So this uniform binding group is a little bit complicated for the sphere. But for the cube, the uniform buffer and the uniform binding group become much simpler. You can see we only pass a 4x4 matrix, that is model view projection matrix. You see here, the entry only contains one element, that is model view projection matrix. Inside the draw uh, function, you can see here, we draw the sphere and the cube separately. Here we draw the sphere using pipeline one. This is defined for the sphere. We draw the cube using pipeline two. So we just draw these two objects separately by using their respective uh, pipelines. You can see we, when we draw the cube, we use a draw indexed method. Here for the sphere, we use the draw function directly. Basically, we combine the code from video 12 and video 35 together and I use a single render path to create our sphere and a cube. In this way, you can create as many as 3D objects you want in a single scene. Now, we finish the modification to the main.ts file. Now we can save this file. Up to now, we have finished our programming. We can then run the following command on the terminal window. Open the terminal window. Run the command npm run prod to bundle our code. Okay, the bundle file is created successfully. Now we can click the go live link to open Chrome Canary to view our 3D objects. Click this link. You can see from this page that our cube has different vertex color and our sphere has a lighting effect and a texture mapping. They have very different environments. Now we have completed this example. In next video, we will discuss how to create a 3D surface with mass line on the surface using different pipelines. Most of the examples presented in this video series are based on my recently published book, Practical Web GPU Graphics. From this link, drsu.net.com, you can see the details about this book. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video series. From this link, you can download the source code used in this video series. I also created a live demo at this link. This demo shows the live results by running the example projects presented in this video series. I will end this video here. See you next time. Bye.